You know, Jesus wants to have all of you and me. And I'm going to be taking you to six scriptures successively, each one where Jesus describes what someone looks like that accepts his word. And in each of these, there's a single theme that Mr. Chisholm picked up in his hymn. You see, this man, while he was sick and, and weak and everything else, spent his time sitting at a table, reading the scriptures, finding the calls of Christ to his children, his disciples, and then working them into this hymn. But in the Gospels, we can trace Christ's call to commitment. He states that we can't be his disciples, we can't be his learners, his followers, unless we are those who are accepting his word into our lives. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, look at the first uh, passage, which is in the book of Luke. So that's the next one to the right, chapter 14. So turn with me to Luke 14. I'm going to show you what I mean. Unless we evidence the characteristics of accepting the word, the first statement of this is in Luke 14 and verse 26. There are six different times Jesus clearly, from his own lips, declares what those who have accepted him into their lives look like. It's kind of like he's amplifying on this little parable that he had given about the good ground accepts the word. When he amplified it, what did he say? Here's the first one in Luke 14, 26. He said, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he can't be my disciple. Now, what is he saying there? I mean, I thought, beloved, we are to know who are believers by the what? Love we have for one another. But he says, no, no, it's known by hating. Now, now is this a paradox? Is this a contradiction? Is this, what is this? No, what he's talking about is the degree of love. Look what he says. If anyone comes to me and doesn't hate his father, mother, and wife, and children, brothers, yes, his own life also, and that gives the key. He says the degree of love, the comparison. Hate is essentially has to do with a comparison of loves. Simply put, our love for God is to be so great that in comparison to our love, even for the dearest on earth, it looks like we hate them compared to our utter consuming devotion to Christ. So so what's the lesson? First of all, it's this. Hearts open completely in love for Christ is what it means To accept his word. It means we must love him most. Now we can love many things in life. But there's to be no doubt who you and I love the most. And it can't be ourself. And it can't be our children. And it can't be our wonderful wife or wonderful husband. And it can't be anybody else that we love most. Now, what did Jesus say? Some verses for you to think about. Matthew 22. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. That's a complete love. Love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your might. Love the Lord with all your You have. Love him all the time, as the little chorus goes. Jesus said, I want to have all of you. I want your heart open completely in love for me. I want you to love me most. And we love him in the good times and the bad times because we're constantly confronted with pressure to buckle, to give in, to 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 love maybe our career or maybe pleasure, to love maybe security or to love comfort convenience. Those, by the way, are the temptations the older you get. The three temptations that plague America's successful older people is a lust for comfort, convenience, and security. And sometimes our comfort, convenience, and security precludes an utter love for Christ because there are places we won't go because we're not comfortable, places we won't go because we're not secure, places we won't go because it's not convenient that the one who we are to love supremely is calling us to go. And we are constantly confronted in this culture to love Jesus, but not most. And Jesus said, if you're accepting, welcoming me into your life, I have to be the one you love supremely. Now, what, what does loving God with an unrivaled supreme love mean? It means that we will esteem nothing 
family, friends, possession, job, fame, power, pleasure, and especially ourselves, of more worth than he is. He will be supreme. How do you measure that? Does anything rob the time that Jesus deserves? Then you love that more than him. Does anything cause you to hunger more after that than after him? Then that is something that you love more. And so that's why we are to constantly be having a new beginning. We're supposed to be confessing and turning from and repenting from anything that takes his place. Such love constrains me. See, see. Chisholm was, was, was thinking through in his life, what does it mean to love Christ completely? What does it mean to open my heart completely? He said it. Such love constrains me to answer his call. But what was his call? Love the Lord your God with all of your heart. To answer his call, to follow his leading, and give him my all. My all what? All my desire, all my attention, all my hopes, my dreams. You see, the, the early church and the great saints through the century were those that were consumed with one thing, pleasing God. They measured everything by would it please the Lord or not. I wonder, can you say in consecration to the Lord, I love you so much. It constrains me to answer your call to love you most. I want to follow your leading. I want to give you my all. You know, the disciples were constantly confronted with this. And what they say, Lord, help us to have more faith. Help us to understand that. See, we're the same. It's not like you get one big lightning bolt that that forever gets you exactly lined up. It's like uh, you can't have one tuning. You know, our, our piano at home keeps, my piano players tell me, it keeps slowly moving out of tune. Did you know that's a picture of what our spiritual lives are like? We are slowly getting out of tune with the Lord. And it's not like you can get really ratcheted up one time at some meeting or at some conference or at some camp and, and it just gets you for life. It is a constant recalibrating your heart and your life back to the right orientation. And the, what we're supposed to do is have our heart open completely in love to Christ. And we're supposed to say with Chisholm, second line, such love constrains me to answer your call, to keep following your leading, to give you my all. Loving the Lord demonstrates he is worthy. We choose to do things his way, not our own. This is the essence of true worship.